Guys, I, I just wanted to start this Monday off uh, by saying a happy Diwali <laughs> uh, to both of you. Yeah. Thank you. I see Anna dressed up for the occasion. Yeah, I, I am coming from a Diwali celebration. You are? Yeah. Okay. He has a white button up on for those of you listening to audio. Uh, I'm super excited. Thank you. I wonder if you have a Diwali uh, resolution. I don't know if you guys do that. <laughs> no, there, actually, there isn't. I don't think it is. That's an American thing? Less yeah. samosas. Okay. Less samosas? Fewer. Uh, fewer. <laughs> if it, you can quantify it, you say fewer instead of less. Yes, perfect. So anyway, whatever. I'm just happy that we're here to celebrate together. And um, I'm happy to be a part of your guys' culture. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. For those that don't know, it's the Festival of Lights that coincides with the Indian New Year. It's a big deal for one fifth of the world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys got a lot of Yeah, we have a, a lot, lot of people, people. here. Yeah. A lot of bodies. <laughs> a lot That's, of bodies. Um, is that the thing where there's lights in like the lanterns that they float up into the air? Or is that uh That's like, you know, that's like that's just, like a Thailand like Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's Thai. That's yeah. Pretty, I'm pretty sure that's Thai. So it has nothing to do with uh this I'm sure like, at that point at this point India is doing it too. The volley's basically light fireworks. And everyone parties and drinks and so like, just like has here. a good time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, same thing. Everyone's having a good time tonight. Can you say it again? Diwali. Oh, Diwali. So the W is a V. Got it. Yeah. Thick. V is not a V and W are in, in so India. Like, are quite funny. And, and for Indians, uh, Las Vegas is Las Vegas. Vegas. They wedgie. The, the I'm w a vegetarian. <laughs> You're a vegetarian. Yes. That is so cool. <laughs> Eat your vegetables. Okay. <laughs> All right, you learn something new every day. Yeah. Cool. W's and V's switched. That's okay. all you need to know. <laughs> well, freaking happy Diwali to all of our Indian listeners. Yeah. Um, you guys ready to hop right into some news? Let's mm -hmm. do it. Do I want to start with all, all things uh, pop culture, because we might as well start this Monday off fun and exciting. Mm -hmm. um, do we have an update on Felicity Huffman? Did she get out early? I it, it's insane. The full 15 that days was too much. 14 days. <laughs> the <sighs> fucking criminal that Felicity Huffman is got let out early. What a joke. On what good behavior is 14 days? Yeah. So how, how many days did she get out? 11 days. She so served she, 11. So uh, uh, what could she have done in 11 days that made her such a great fashion? Her fashion. <laughs> yeah. Did you see the way she... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm they actually like, shocked she lasted 11. Meaning, don't they let people out all the time just because the prisons are crowded? Like, yeah. let's get like more serious criminals. Sure, in. but this is so high profile that like now if I'm Lori Laughlin, I'm sticking my chest out. No like, way. what are you gonna do? You gonna let no. me out after Lori one day? Lori Laughlin's getting screwed. Lori uh, Laughlin's going three I'm to four <laughs> years shortening to two and a half is still a big deal. It may be three years <laughs> shortening after 14 days. No. It's a joke that she got let out early. Three days? Just Do the extra three at least, days. At least let, for the purpose of <laughs> optics, make her finish her sentence. If I was her, I'd be like, you know what? I'm staying in three more days. I want to look like a real one. Her, her. Like, where do you think? Let, let's, let's, uh, where do you think prison? she was? So she got let out on a Friday because apparently they let out people. They decide on Fridays. Yeah. She was at Giorgio Baldi Friday night. No, I, having truffle ravioli. Yeah, she's probably at the yeah. Montage Spa truffle Noki, on I mean. Saturday. For sure. Why um, am I wrong? Like, are the guys getting equal? Why, does, why are we only hearing about the women? So I think in the cases, these women are taking responsibility for the action. So they're taking the bullet for the dude. So I think in Lori Laughlin's case, the bribery is now being charged with Massimo as well. So Massimo, before the bribery, had no charges? No charges. It was all Lori Laughlin. So my guess that. it's whoever is the front-facing person for the crime. But what do you mean by front facing? Meaning like who's Person actually communicating it. with the water polo coach, the with singer and all I think these all guys. these men were like, look, do whatever you babe, want, get him in SC, I don't care. Babe, Just you're tell taking me how much the, the fall. Check is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Gosh. Okay. Well, um, whatever. Eleven days, we got a fashion trend. Yeah. Our post did well. It seemed to be catching on. Somebody else dressing up for Halloween? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, that was probably a... She's gonna write a best-selling book 
what I did wrong as a parent. Yeah, my 11 days. My 11 days when of learned, torture. 11, 11 days of hell. Days. Is she even relevant? Her 11 days of hell now. is now Pete's is, regular right? life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she 11, would never understand. I would argue it's better. 11, yes. days, 11 days in wherever Felicity Huffman was versus the pod that Pete was. I probably Pete, should, yeah. His the life homeless now shelter probably, he was living yeah. in. His I've been way too much fucking money for. Yeah. Your life now is pretty good, but the way yeah. you describe the situation that you were living in before that, it... I would take Lori Laughlin. I would too. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, well, listen, justice has been done. Yep. And um, we'll wait to hear about the others. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, it's time that we give a rundown of this Kanye album. Mm-hmm. We talked about it, obviously, on our Friday episode, but we record before the album came out. It's now been out a whole weekend. Um, I'll start. I listened to it one time through. That was it. Okay. Never again. On it. Um, he didn't listen lie. to it. I didn't listen to it. At all. I he doesn't listen to music. He doesn't know any songs. He knows Drake. Like, we'll be, sing- we'll be at a wedding, a and we'll all be singing to a song, and Amanda will look at me like, you don't even know the song. <laughs> well, let Drake put out a new album yeah. and see what yeah, happens. He knows, he I, knows, knows, I know who I need to know. Yeah. He does. Uh, I listened to it twice. Okay. Uh, like, musically, it sounded fine. Fine. The lyrical content, obviously, I'm not a religious person. I didn't identify with it. Yep. But not all the music was religious, in my opinion. I'll, I'll tell you what I took away from it. So Friday night, I went to the Laker game. And I I'm, I'm, went to go get a drink, and I run into a guy that listens to the pod, Sammy Sam. I, he was like, oh, did you listen to the Kanye album? I'm like, yes. I'm like, what do you think? He's like, well, I'm a Christian, and I love it. Yeah. And if you look at what pastors are saying, it's getting them excited about what they can do on Sundays. Yeah. And then I had literally at that moment while I was downing two shots of tequila, yeah. I was like, holy shit, this is going to work. And I immediately Googled while I was at the game, how many Christians are on earth? Billion. 2.4 <laughs> billion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think about how big there's nothing bigger than religion yeah right that's true like hip-hop is an american thing i would argue that the rest of the world it's a very tertiary like interest in terms of music genre religion though is the biggest interest globally Mm -hmm. and if you think about if your religion is being uh portrayed in a cool fun fashionable way it's kind of a jackpot. And I think we may be completely turned off by it. I'm not interested in it. But I feel like if you're a church going person and all of a sudden Sundays is now Kanye yeah. in your church, I'm like, oh my God. Like, think about it. Like, w- w- imagine our whatever, what was this, what religious studies we did we do? Like the Sunday school. Yeah, we had like a Sunday school. T- Sanskrit or whatever we were learning. And I, we didn't have, think about, we, imagine if Kanye was just singing Sanskrit, like chanting. Sure. It works. So, but your point yeah. is, yeah, bringing cool to church is a good, it's good for monetary, business. Yeah, good for business. But he's still a fraud. That doesn't yeah. matter. Like, we, no. do we, are we all in agreement he's a fraud? Yeah, yeah I agree. Of I actually, <laughs> I read uh, six months ago. He was singing, "I'm a sick fuck. I like a quick fuck." Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> and the, now he's Jesus. No, here's the best part about it. But I, like, it's so amazing that like it doesn't intelligent matter. people can just be fooled by this. I think a lot of people aren't as intelligent as you think they yeah, are. Yeah, maybe not. There's a reason why it's called the one percenters. Don't they talk? Isn't that a money thing? <laughs> it. I know. A lot Let of me dumb tell you, money people. and intelligence are <laughs> I don't right know. next. They're next door neighbors. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. I'm if you the if relatives. you actually hold on to it, yeah. then you end up being a one percent. Okay, fine. Fair. So here's here's my biggest thing is I actually I think everyone should listen to the Zane Lowe interview. It's fascinating. First of all, he sounds like crazy as usual, but a lot of what he says is really interesting and does make sense. The problem is as soon as he makes sense, he says something completely off the wall. 
I feel like he's more. This is hard, hard to even imagine. He's more arrogant than ever. I feel. Yes, because like. because now and that's literally the antithesis of like the basis of Christianity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's about like love your neighbor more than you yeah. love yourself and like treat everyone. E- you know, it's the antithesis of everything. I mean, nothing. Any religion. Okay. The way Kanye talks is the antithesis. Okay, of it. you watching Righteous Gemstone. Religion's a sham. Well, I don't. I hate to break it to yeah, people. Yeah, so, like, yeah. no, but can is. we all agree that he's just uh, he's being opportunistic on the fact, like, okay, religion's big. I can make money off religion. I don't even think he thinks I don't think all so. that. I think he's so crazy. I don't think he thinks that at all. I think he he literally thinks he's born again. He's on this new path, and in two years, when they're divorced, he's gonna be banging everything in situ- anything in sight, and he's gonna be a different person, and it won't matter. I think Omar's guess is closer to probably reality that he might actually think he's some form of Jesus Christ I think type that's, character. I think yes. that's right. Yeah, I, don't I think, think he really thinks he's Jesus. Yeah, so I don't think he's sitting there saying, okay, how can I spin this? I got it. I'm going to, you know, I like we thought at first like um, he wasn't in a good light with all the Trump stuff. Maybe the Christian stuff was like a way to get back. It's definitely not that because he's still talking about Trump in this Zane Lowe interview. Yeah. I don't think he's calculated enough to say, look at this no, business opportunity. I don't think he's calculated at all. I think he might think he's a Jesus Christ type character. Yeah. And he's fully all in. Yeah, he's fully bought into the fact that he is a the living figure. Jesus Christ. I think so. Yeah. And he people are so eating it up. Arrogant. Everyone is at the forum right now. This is Sunday night. My entire feed is people listening to Kanye yeah. at the forum pretending he's God. I'll tell you what, I'm sure this has went it's on working. forever in different forms, but we have been exposed with Trump, and I would say Kanye West, we have been exposed to two of the biggest like social experiments ever. Yeah. Of like, what will people buy into, and what where are people's real boundaries? This guy literally shit on the entire community, and everything that they hate with the Donald Trump stuff, and saying slavery was a choice and all that stuff, and those people packed the forum to celebrate God with him, because yeah. now... He's a preacher. There's an amazing meme of like uh, Jewish kids at the forum and they're just like bopping their heads. Yeah. <laughs> How long until he files for like religious tax exemption? Uh, like when you buy that Holy Spirit merch and he's not taxed. So it's funny, Zane Lowe asked him that question. Are you a operating as a church? Yeah. And he pretty much, uh, yeah. Uh, he's trying to. He's not yeah. though. Yeah. I don't but you know he th- wants to. Wait, so at what point... Um, Wait, so like streams, right? We talked about what do we think streams are going to be in a month? Mm-hmm. Where are we at with that? What I you- think my personal opinion is they're already forecasting like 250 yeah. for opening week. I think it's going to be really big right away because of all the crazy hype and curiosity. And I think it's going to fall off a cliff. I think it's going to fall off a cliff. I, I, but I wouldn't. The tour is going to sell out. Yeah. 100%. And like it's going to sell out in like Brazil and like all these other countries that are big kind of Christianity hotbeds. Yeah. And I think it'll it's gonna work. Like he's gonna rappers can't travel the world and pack stadiums. They just can't. There's like they're not that popular. There just to give another version of or another view on the story though, there is one of the churches, I forget where it was, maybe Atlanta or something, that he donated to because he was going to churches and doing Sunday service. Yeah. And they they returned his donation or donated it somewhere else because of his Trump stuff that's interesting so, so it's not i blind from everyone open I, arms. I hit up eric deluxe to come on and at, talk about this yeah he had plans but he was telling me that he was shocked in atlanta and in vegas this weekend people kept asking they were requesting on god to play at the club and he is like i'm blacked out and i gotta play this like <laughs> yeah i don't think that'll last i don't know maybe i'm just like uh, maybe i'm biased from my own yeah feelings, i think we, we we're also not uh, i just it's well, working it and, works. No, but, and, and we're also in a an environment where there isn't a lot of new hip-hop yeah so kanye is the first of like all these guys that's putting out a full album full records yeah and we haven't seen anything i will say though anytime you talk like if we went and talked to our group of friends nobody's brainwashed right they would all be like no nah, we know what this is blah 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 and i just feel like anytime that happens things start to get 
Shitty. Yeah, but like, I don't think the, for instance, I don't think the African American community, I don't think even the Christian community blindly just openly accepts him. I think for music like this, they do. I think they do. I was born or I was raised Christian. And yeah, I can like, tell you, this opens up to a whole new market. No, where, no, no, that's true, of course. Where I think, I think this could really pump out numbers. Yeah. Because now parents can play with their kids. Yeah. Now that you can be, you can not only be cool, like in the faith, but you can do it. You can play it in church. You can play it in the car with kids. So yeah. if you were, if you never made it out here, you would have been today Sunday morning. In, no, I don't go to. I, I, I don't gone really, to church and you'd no. be just singing on God. I bet. I bet. In I mean, at the university they have a church. I bet they would play it there. Yeah, it makes sure. it makes for church sure. cool again. I we had the worst music ever. Yeah, had, like old people singing. You tell me I could bring Kanye in. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of Pete cool. sold. It, oh no, I'm sold on Pete. the money Everyone back. Who's yeah. Christian has been telling me that this is yeah, amazing. But we had Omar and Sterling, but that's different. They're a different demo. I still think I don't know. Anytime I've ever seen like all of Kanye's money now comes from clothing yeah and it comes from clothing being cool with the sterling types and the, you know what i mean the cool people it's really important that those people are behind him if you're doing obscure this might work for the next six months i'm sure bieber's out here listening to that for sure he is but bieber's off the freaking rails where's bieber making money he's rich he doesn't need to make money i <laughs> i don't think he just said if he gets 20 million likes today he'll he'll release an album before christmas that means 50 million dollars to him if he puts it on an album. Sure. But I just think Bieber's not. He should do Saturday service. What he used to be. <laughs> he, yeah. Uh, Kanye <laughs> said he's doing uh, Jesus is Born on uh, Christmas Day. Yeah. You saw that? Another yeah. album. It's funny. Is the album was late, right? Like, it didn't come till the afternoon, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it didn't come. Yeah, yeah, early. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's pretty shocking. It's a pretty good experiment in people's lack of really giving a shit. Okay. Because even the Christian stuff, there's... You're not religious, so I don't think you're... I'm saying there's 15 years of, of very vulgar music. He's, re he's redoing it all! <laughs> so you can, be, you can be born again nice. Me? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not Christian. <laughs> my religion, maybe one day. My religion one is called... Day. Maybe my religion day. is called karma. You're a fucking asshole. You end up... One day, Jesus will be nice. He's going to come out just giving compliments the whole podcast. I nope. think Wednesday should be a Christian episode. <laughs> Wednesday. That we should recommend Christian Wednesdays. playing it in church. Okay. That could be good. Let's play in that. Pete. My God mark that is an awesome God. <laughs> I still remember some of the old oh. from, from Ohio. Maybe I'll, we'll sing some Hindu chanting. Okay. Um, should we move on? Yes. Okay. We'll keep following that. I'm sure there'll be little, you know, we'll get the official numbers. We'll get the, you know, we'll get all sorts of updates. Let's talk about this Netflix show um, called The Laundry Mat that's getting a lot of press. Not great press, but also you said it's really good. Did you watch the full show? Yeah, so I was, I was on my way to watch my Amazon rom-com show. And so I clicked Oh, yeah. What was that again? Just Modern Love. Yeah. Okay. Jeez. And I had about an hour and a half to watch TV okay. on Saturday night. And so I will just start clicking around on Netflix and I see this thing called the laundromat. So I click, I first time ever, I, I didn't even know trailers were on Netflix. I watched the trailer. Yeah, yeah. So I watched the trailer. I was like, oh shit, this is about the Panama Papers. Panama Papers are something that happened a few years ago that kind of unveiled all this um, kind of tax evasion scheme by like the richest people in the world about with shell companies and things like that. And the whole premise of the movie is the l two lawyers that actually created 250,000 shell companies for wealthy people and politicians all over the world and how they narrate it. It's like Antonio Ber Banderas and Gary Oldman narrating how they like pretty much help all these rich people screw every all the tax rules in the world. Yep. And it's, it's like five or six different situations. It is, it's a very quirky movie and people are judging it from a creative standpoint. I thought they did a really, really great job like the big short did in explaining what is actually going on here. Uh -huh. That like all you dummies don't know what rich people are doing. Yep. And I think it's so important that like everybody watches. I hate that like, a dumbass movie critic has influence over actually a film that could educate regular people. Because yeah. the end of the movie, so Meryl Streep is the star. She pretty much 
is one of the characters that helped you, defro- you know, show light on this whole topic. And she kind of says like, there is going to be a revolution. Yeah. Like the people who will revolt when they learn about this. It's just that some dumb movie critic who's judging it based on like art is yeah. not le- is going to prevent someone who wants to just watch an entertaining piece of content. Yeah. It's crazy how powerful a film can be if the right people get to see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and but the bigger issue is what drama always points to is that it's too complicated and too sophisticated for the average person. No, they explain this very simply. Yeah, but I'm just saying. Think about like, if you look at like The Big Short or um, whatever, all those movies and documentaries that were out about that stuff. Like nobody's checking on that. So I, I would say The Big Short. So the 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 home crisis, the home loan crisis, was very complicated. But it was still the rich getting richer at the end of the yes. Day. This is. It's a little. It's a little more. I'll simple. watch no, it before no. I. So bite, I, I, I haven't watched the. You guys should watch. Uh, it. We're I busy praising it yet, Kanye I, West. We can't worry about. No, but I understand. I know everything about the taxes. Panama Papers and what they exposed, and they exposed all these rich politicians and rich business people and how they evaded, uh, stole money from, the populations of where they governed and did all these really terrible things. Yeah. But the problem is. I think people will watch it and listen to it and be like, oh, that's crazy. But don't really like kind of mentally grasp what that means. No. That's what I'm saying. The Big Short had Margot Robbie in a freaking bathtub explaining in dummy words exactly what happened. Yeah. And it was an incredible movie. Yeah, I thought Big and Short. People were like, damn, good movie. Yeah, so, so Big but- Short did probably the best explanation of the financial crisis of anything I've seen. Yeah. yeah. And they're talking about how specifically no one went to jail except for one dude, blah, blah. You know what I mean? All yeah. I'm saying is it's a different type of just rich getting richer. And that was however long ago was our revolt. Yeah, I, I'm starting to give up on the revolt, is what I'm saying. I thought a revolt was coming. I don't think it is. No, I no. Think people I are think literally, a revolt's definitely it's happening. Coming, but it's, it's coming for a different not reason. Happening. Yeah, it's different. Coming for reasons. a different reason. I don't it's think people know how to freaking revolt. I don't. I think they're literally listening to Kanye and on Instagram, and they're not revolting. If you take the shit. history of this country, we actually are pretty good at revolting. I will see. I, that's my. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I, I think uh, art is reflecting what's going to happen. Meaning, it's a leading indicator. So you have movies like The Joker, yeah. movies like Us. Uh, and there's this uh, Korean movie that's playing right now at the Grove and the Century City. All these movies, it's a, all about the revolt of yeah. like the, the working class. Like, we're just done. Yeah. And if that's in mainstream movies right now. It'll happen. That's Eventually scary. Eventually, one guy, the person, the, the, the man or woman that's going to lead the revolt is watching Laundromat right now at home and... And no, they're, they're like, watching Parasite, they're w- which is the Korean movie with that's uh, watch the laundromat. It'll be like that. And, and they're watching uh, the Joker. They're watching us. They're watching I all agree. these movies. I just think the fact that life expectancy for white males is down because everyone's dying from opioid overdose is the revolt. Sure, I just think there will be a revo- re- revolution, yeah, I just, I, which kidding. will change everything. Yeah, there, it'll be something so simple that causes it. Yeah, but it will happen, and then things will change. I, I think the fact that you can go to the Grove every week and watch a movie about a revolt mm-hmm. is a little scary. Yeah, yeah, but you just get to go in and <laughs> catch, catch a good film about throw, the revolt I'll, and about the Panama Papers. And then you're like, ah, fuck it, and then you go home. I'll and throw. Like, you know what? You know what the, the funniest gram. thing about the laundromat. Is so there's this uh, guy, I believe he's an either British or African uh, businessman who's like cheating on his wife with his daughter's roommate, and the daughter uh, catches him and it doesn't really give away the movie, but like she, of course is wearing a USC sweatshirt. Nice. Of course, the criminal businessman's yep. daughter. Yep. He loves it. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. I was like, I'm glad that art is reflecting how screwed up this college is. Yeah. So art's reflecting reality. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I can't wait to watch it. I love those type of movies. You're going to love yeah. it. You I should watch I, it. I, I want to Tower yeah. was one of like, uh, yeah. all that stuff. Anything yeah. that like explains well in... Yeah. I, this, you're going to love this movie. It's a movie, not a series, right? No, it's just a movie, yeah. Um, and just quickly in content, uh, Silicon Valley is back on tonight. Oh, it debuts tonight? Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm so Season excited. Season premiere. 
That's amazing. I never watched it. Yep. It's the best show on television. Yeah, I'm excited about it. It's literally dork entourage. <laughs> Pass. It's it's way better than Entourage. <laughs> Entourage is just one of my favorite shows. Yeah, Entourage is. is too good. <laughs> I, so I don't relate. I don't relate to. I think your dream life is closer to Silicon Valley. Yeah. Where mine I want to be Vinny Chase. No, yeah. my yeah. dream <laughs> life is Entourage. What are you talking about? I don't know, man. I think you want to. <laughs> I, mean, I think the Silicon Valley, they get screwed over and over again. Yeah, but your They're, dream life, I feel like, is to raise like a billion dollars. Uh, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> Mine's like a Vinny Chase. I mean, party. Yeah. Yeah. I always say Silicon Valley is an underestimated uh, parody of Silicon yeah. Valley. Like, you know who, who likes Silicon Valley? Uh, uh, Silicon Valley? Kanye. He qu- he mentioned something in the Zane Lowe interview about Silicon Valley. Yeah, he did. How much he hated. He said, um, "I don't want the world to be changed unless I'm the one changing it." That was the quote. Something yeah. along those yeah. lines. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus West. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you ready for some technology mm-hmm. business news? Let's talk about. This is kind of business, kind of pop culture, a little bit. The in the middle of this, the Me Too era. Let me ask you guys a question. Would you say the Me Too era has come to an end? If you think about the Me Too era, is it over? So what's funny is I watched uh, about 30 minutes of the Bill Burr special finally. Thank you. I, I like got through it. And I got You got through, through it? That was, I mean, it was, you didn't His like voice it. just drives me nuts. Okay, it was okay. really hard. Okay. I did laugh. It was like it was funny. So Especially funny. the Me Too stuff was hysterical. Yeah. When like when there's gonna be a a first lady who's a man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But he he talked about you know, is he was talking about the Me Too era, and I was thinking to myself, I'm like, is it, is it over? Like, oh, he because he pretty much said all the really screwed up guys are already screwed. Yeah, I don't think that's the case, but I, I think if you, I mean, the problem is, is every week we hear something dark, but it's a lot about the same people. Yeah. So I don't know what's left. Yeah. There is obviously some more screwed up stuff that happened oh, yeah. that hasn't been released. I don't know if those people are coming out. So you could, if those people never come out, then I guess you could say Me Too era is over. And Ernst and Young got her way ahead of it in 2018 in Hoboken, <laughs> New Jersey. Good old Hoboken. You know what they said? When women speak, they shouldn't be shrill. Clothing must flatter, but short skirts are a no-no. Ooh. After all, sexuality scrambles the mind. Ooh. Women should look healthy and fit yeah. with a good haircut and manicured nails. This is in 2018. They went to 30 <laughs> female executives with the height of the Me Too moment. They were advising women on how to so, act, dress. So they're going full Trump. Like, we don't care about the Me Too moment. Was there one for men also by chance? That was not shared. Okay. I just, I mean, I wonder. The men was like simple. Um, don't whip your dick out. <laughs> yeah. Dick must stay in <laughs> pants at all times. Okay. Dick can come out after 6 p.m. Happy hours at whatever, McCormick and Schmicks or whatever shitty place they're going to. <laughs> I've been to many happy hours at McCormick and Schmicks. Yeah. Whatever the New York equivalent is. Is there yeah. McCormick and Schmicks in there? Probably. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. There's that was one probably the guy version, like, right. Yeah. But that's, I think that's just a testament to like how... Some people just aren't even close to like on this. I mean, what kind of advice is that? Yeah. They probably thought genuinely they were doing the right thing. It's this is how women should look. I wonder if you can fi- get fired for being like a little chubby. Good haircut is crazy. And who's determining nice a good haircut? Manicured nails? And well, yeah. they said healthy and fit. Yeah. Who's determining that? Don't flaunt your the body. The fat old white dude. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I don't think so, Debbie. You're out of here. The, they said the most important thing can do is signal fitness and wellness. <laughs> Don't show skin. But do, right? I mean, it said like attractive but not sexy. Because they'll scramble their little brains. Yeah, I mean, I don't... They even <laughs> said, don't be aggressive that, like that's like That's the ultimate, like, uh, when everyone's zigging. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're like, yeah. nope, we're zagging. Yeah. We're going hard. They don't even know. You can tell you're just so <laughs> blind to the fact that that might even be a red flag. You just think like, oh, we're just updating our company handbook. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You know what? You, your haircut, it's a little too sexy for me. Those nails, gross. My brain is scrambled. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. that, those nails made my dick hard. Is that, Get it out. Is that cleavage? <laughs> my brain scrambled. Beat it. <laughs> okay. good stuff. These anyway. companies are insane. Yeah. It, yeah. it uh, just bolsters our point. Everyone's stupid. 
I mean, it kind of seems that way sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we got to be careful the group chat doesn't, like, our, our news isn't too negative. <laughs> yeah. Like, everyone's a stupid criminal is, yeah. like, pretty much what our stories <laughs> yeah. have been. Okay. Um, let's talk about, uh, talk about LVMH. We've been talking about them a lot lately. Mm-hmm. I like it. Um, they have made an all-cash bid um, to take over Tiffany. For Amazing. details at roughly 120 bucks a share. This is fascinating. What's going on here? I don't, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't understand the significance of this. I don't, is it Tiffany's doing really well, right? Tiffany's had like you know I think a record year last year, and, and so they're just saying, "Hey, come with the winners." And they, LVMH obviously is completely on fire, probably sitting on a ton of cash. Yep. This is fourteen billion dollar cash offer, which is a thirty percent premium to their market cap. So it's a so they want it. They yeah, clearly want it. it. And I think I would agree that Tiffany's to me is like missing out on a lot of opportunity. Mm-hmm. Like you slap a Virgil Tiffany collab, every every guy girl yeah. in the world is wearing Tiffany's. Uh, Tip, yeah. So they, I think the the interesting thing is where Tiffany is really great at jewelry. They have massive exposure in China. LVMH is not really big in the jewelry business for the most part at least from what I know. And I think LVMH does an incredible job with brand storytelling, Mm -hmm. better than most. Mm -hmm. Tiffany's brand is just kind of blah. Mm -hmm. It's like whatever. Imagine if they did what they do at Dior and LV Mm -hmm. to Tiffany's and it actually revives it as like a cool, relevant brand. It feels like it's got a lot of upside. I agree. And if you bring excitement, if you... like. You look at where Tiffany's is in Beverly Hills, it's one of the mo- most iconic it's the best real location. estate places yeah. like in Los Angeles. And I probably haven't walked in there in 20 years. I saw some of their men's accessories on Instagram. Look pretty good. Yeah, the product is good. Yeah. The packaging is good. The brand and is good. It sounds like this was an unsolicited, unsolicited offer, yeah. meaning LVMH just went out and said, here you go. Here you go. Yeah. Here's a here's, just a, here's took a check. Fourteen billion hundred dollar bills and boom, slap it on your face. Yeah, I'm Bernard. Yeah. Bitch. <laughs> 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 Kanye was talking about Bernard a lot in his. Said uh, Bernard was Zayla. his new Drake, his yeah. new enemy. enemy, not enemy, but sort of rival. Uh, rival, which is like, I mean, and that's not that's not a fair comparison. Yeah. You're a uh, uh, hundred and one billion short. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, well, I like everything about it. I think Tiffany's obviously shows a lot of, that men's stuff looks good, shows a lot of promise. Man, go under, if there the, was go the, under the winning umbrella. Yeah, if there was the right collaborations, the right moments, yep. the right brand storytelling. Like for young people, Tiffany's was so relevant when we were young. Yeah. And I just feel like it lost its relevance for whatever reason. Okay. Well, Bernie can figure it out. Yeah, Bernie yeah. will get that right yeah. back into shape. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, let's talk about another uh, CEO, the H&M CEO. Um, so there's been a lot of like protesting and stuff about fast fashion and how terrible it is on the uh, climate and just how terrible it is across the board. The H&M CEO is saying this could lead to big problems. What's his take here? Is this a take to preserve, make himself not look so bad or does he have a real point? So his point is the protests are saying stop doing things like consume, fly, buy fast fashion, and he goes, yes, they may lead to a small environmental impact, but it could have t- bad social consequences, meaning like you could end up disrupting businesses, yep. and that will actually have a bigger impact on young people because so many of them are employed by them. So, many, so the ecosystem has a tremendous amount of impact if people just start consuming yep. all these different products. To stop consuming. Yeah, because yep. like, people just want to protest but like if our clothes are five times more expensive, are we going to purchase it? If our flights, you know, we're, because there's less flights, because we don't want to put out fossil fuels into the air, yeah. and there's only two flights a day to New York, yeah. then our fl- the price to go to New York yeah, goes That's through. another reason why I don't think there'll be a revolt, is because I think we're too fragmented. Like some people are protesting fast fashion, some people are protesting the flights. <laughs> but it sounds like it's just young people, because if you think about people over like 40, 45, they, don't give a they shit. think this is all insane. The way young people are talking about all yeah. this wokeness and but that's why I'm saying protest. who's going to lead a revolt and organize when everyone mm. 
is revolting against a different thing. You're revolting against like... What about Greta? Yeah, Greta's dope, but I haven't heard about Greta in the last two weeks. Yeah. Here's the thing. <laughs> like, gotta keep if, your... <laughs> if Pete can't afford a loaf of bread, he's stabbing us. Pete? Yeah. He I've seen sure, the way not, Pete you know eats. <laughs> yes, he is, but you know what he's not doing is fucking leading a revolt. No, but like he may just stab us and yeah. grab our wallet. That's fine. One on one, hand in hand combat. <laughs> he probably wins. But the point is. <laughs> oh, did you just admit that on air? <laughs> the point okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. you're, you're, a big you're like a beef eating yeah. American. Come on, I'm a man. pussy from <laughs> India. Uh, you're from the valley. Yeah. You're not from India. <laughs> <laughs> My genetics are Indian. Yeah. Don't get it. Our genetics are not valley. We'd be a lot bigger if that was the case. Aren't you from like Atlanta or something? <laughs> yeah. You forgot how to get you from like Atlanta, yeah, you liar. <laughs> but my genetic we get it. map leads back to a bunch of people that are not that strong. We get it. But my point Pete's is... Pete's being the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah. I'd kill all three of you. You guys have been standing I don't know, Pete. I've been, Maybe I've been together. boxing a lot lately. Yeah. Um, mm. I My point is, that's part of the reason, too, why I don't see a revolt coming. I don't think people, I think a lot of people are really pissed off, but they're not quite sure what at. Nobody can get along. I don't know. If you look around the world, it looks pretty scary. Like, there's, like, there, Chile has massive protests. Lebanon, Lebanon today. Hong Kong. It's they're happening. They're more organized. We're too they're spoiled over here. They're also more disenfranchised like You don't hear American. Lebanon is really protesting fucking fast fashion. No, no, no. They're protesting one thing. No, yeah. no, but but the, the real issue is... Americans are spoiled. We're, we're protesting like, like mean words. For now, but as inequality continues to widen and we'll people can't afford to live, yeah. I think people can find common cause pretty quickly. I think, yeah. Like when I'm scootering down the street in my pod when it's raining and I have an umbrella and Pete doesn't, he's going to stab me. Yeah, he's going to beat the shit out of you. I literally think there's going to be like a bird or like an Uber type invention that... Only rich people can get. No, no, no. It's going to like provide solutions. I think it's going to go that way. I think it's going to be like, hey, we have this new uh, incredible tech startup which provides domes for... Uh, people who can't afford houses. You have free domes and they're lit by blah, blah, blah. And that thing's worth $82 billion. And people have places to live and the problems are solved. That's so Pete's living in a dome. Okay. Well, the way Pete's, Pete's working, giving I mean, Pete's... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, if all else fails, Pete will get... <laughs> <laughs> the way Pete's working, he might be fine. Yeah. You Pete's know? working his Pete's ass Pete's in off. here on a Sunday doing video and audio. That's the type of mentality that gets you out of that... Uh, and then, gonna, and then he's going to rob us on the way lies. home. Stab so someone. Yeah, you never have to rob us if you keep doing this. <laughs> okay. Um, let's talk about if you do have money. Uh, it turns out that Apple Pay is the most popular mobile payment platform that there is. Um, I'm not surprised here, but I obviously don't know shit about mobile payment platforms. I started using it not that long ago. It seemed so sketchy to me for so long, like having credit cards on your phone. I don't know why. It's just, really? Yeah, it seems sketchy. I use Apple Pay whenever Wait, I can. That's like literally the argument. Oh, I don't want to buy on internet. People are going to have my information. I don't like I the interwebs from yeah, yeah, yeah. Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey. I don't know what Mexicans are behind those interwebs. <laughs> I fully understand, man. I just that's my, an insane <laughs> comment. I John. agree. I'm just saying. Listen, my Apple ID got hacked about two years ago. And people got access to all my shit. And my concern was, do, could that, say, whoever did that, now also on top of everything they had access to, have access to credit cards. <laughs> you can reverse credit card payments, though. You know what's so crazy? Safe. The crazy to this... I don't uh, trust it. I'm kidding. I do it now. It just took a while, okay? Fuck off, both of you. You know what's crazy is that Apple pays... You know who they surpassed as the most popular mobile payment flat platform? PayPal. Starbucks. Starbucks is the number two mobile payment platform in America. Well, I'm just going to say, shouldn't that be an easy one to pass then? If number one payment platform is frickin' Starbucks and you're offering, you can pay it so, almost everywhere now? So Apple Pay has 30 million users. Starbucks has 25 million. That's which is insane. Which is staggering. Yes. That's 25 insane. million. Apple for, paid 30 million is not that impressive. No, because everyone has an iPhone. I wonder yeah. what they but did. But Starbucks. Like, what, what was their marketing to make that many people sign up? Starbucks? Uh -oh. yeah. It's just Here really to. easy. To, you don't have to wait in line if you use a Starbucks no, app. They, great reward system, too. You get free drinks all the time. Yeah. It's like a super, like, get your first drink free. They're, like, one of the first people on that. Like, so it builds loyalty. Like, Every Sunday, that. your wow. voice is gone. What are you doing? Screaming on the weekends? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Tulum, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> Still? And you've been, been how often are week. you in Tulum? <laughs> Rufus? <laughs> Rufus. The kids yeah, like to wild. party. Props to them. That's the real story. Yeah. I mean, for getting that many people to sign up to your <laughs> payment platform is insane. That yeah. was all through an app? Yeah. Jeez. Okay. It's a good app. That's a good fucking app. I yeah. mean, think about that. Okay. Well, listen. Uh, let's try to put some money on our Apple Pay. If we got any ads, run them. <laughs> okay, we're back. Let's talk about some politics and world news. Uh, we got more fires out here in California. Ooh. Not too close to us. Stop protesting like... about the climate. What? Stop <laughs> protesting about the climate. Don't you think we should be? Isn't the yeah, climate isn't change the... causing? I'm kidding. Okay. Um, there were fires close to us, right? Like yeah. over the hill. Mm -hmm. But most of these are up way north. Yeah. So these fires that are happening, they're called the Kincaid fires, are happening in Sonoma County and near Napa. And the way PG&E, the electric company in California, is handling it is they're just turning off the power and they're having rolling blackouts because they're, because a lot of their electrical um, uh, things caused the fire, caused the last fire last year. So instead of trying to figure out how to not have their equipment cause fire, they're just turning off the power. And what's crazy is there's, this air, there's a, another area called Lafayette in California that I saw today that had a fire and locals didn't know because they didn't have power. So it's like, this is a really screwed up situation, specifically in California. And I can't believe no one's thought about a, a way to not turn off the well, power. Well, the irony is really, it's like, we're talking about Northern California where it's the biggest concentration yeah. of wealth creation in the history of the polio world. polio and doing literally everything. Technology to do anything. They can't, and like, they can't keep power on. So like people are at French Laundry and there's like power goes out. I mean, did you see how many points the Warriors lost by? They can't figure that out. You think they're going to figure out fires? <laughs> the Warriors lost by 30 yeah, to the Thunder. I don't expect these dorks to figure out athletics. <laughs> I do expect them to figure out technology. <laughs> you know what I mean? Figure out how to have some So it sounds like it just grid. San Francisco peaked last year, right? I, that's what I said. I remember did, did a big post. After on Kevin peak. Durant tore his Achilles, San yes. Francisco was just on yeah, You want to talk about our preceding point. life or whatever you said earlier. I think that's what's happening here. We're, we're just showing the downfall of... Yeah. The North. Yeah. Yeah. You know? We the North. We the North. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> they got, did they get crushed? Why did they get crushed? Because I just saw the score and I don't Ooh. really know shit about that. I mean, the Warriors just suck now. They just suck. Who? Ugh. There's no Clay Thompson. Kevin Durant moved to The Nets Brooklyn. and they suck. They got their so ass who beat is today, it? today. It's, it's Steph, Draymond, a bunch, and D'Angelo Russell. And, and you know what parts. Draymond said? Wasn't there said? or one of those He's guys? gone. Uh, Do you know what Draymond said huh. today after in the press conference? What? We fucking suck. He said it? Yes. <laughs> At least he does that because he's such a shit talker. Yeah. yeah. Like if you tried to keep acting. No, he does like, he care? He just signed a $100 million contract. Of course you suck. Yeah, that's cool. Get your $100 million. It was so cool to sign a contract for $100 million and then openly admit you suck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> back to back. <laughs> God. Okay. Uh, let's talk about good old Donald Trump. He So Donald, um, on I think it was Saturday, tweeted, something big has just happened. <laughs> Yeah. Which is like wild. If you think about any president tweeting that other than him, it'd be like, what the fuck? Like you could put the whole country into hysteria. Yeah. So of course with him, I think everyone knows to like that could literally mean anything. Turns out um, there was a U.S. raid of some sorts which killed um, the one of the head guys of the Islamic State. Yep. ISIS. Yeah, but are those different things? No. No. Okay. So I was just so being it's more ISIS proper. leader. I was just being more proper on it. Yeah. Okay, I'm a journalist. <laughs> sorry. Um, so whatever, ISIS. Okay, there, sorry. Um, so points for, for Trump. He said that he detonated a suicide vest and killed himself and people around him. He was obviously soaking in the wind. And then he put out a post, you know, the post that every great, president does when something big like this happens where you really just see where it all went down right yeah. you see the situation room the famous situation room we saw the really famous photos when obama took out bin laden um and trump you know now it's trump's turn and so there they are in the middle of the action yeah turns out the photo 
has to be staged. It has to be completely staged. Well, it happened an hour and a half after. The, first of all, the picture happened apparently an hour and a half after the, the raid that took out the ISIS leader. Yep. Um, most of the cords aren't really plugged in. Like, obviously. Two of the guys are looking at the camera, including the president. Yeah. And so... And this one was supposed to be them, like, watching the raid yes. happen. It's just complete full of shit. Yeah. And yeah. ironically, the president today was also, being Sunday, at the World Series where the Nationals lost to the Astros. And he, they announced him on the loud, uh, you know, whatever, speakers. Yep. And they chanted, lock him up, lock him up. In D.C. In D.C. It's, wow. It, I, I saw a poll that 51% of Americans think he should be impeached now. Like but the other 49% are going to vote for him. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's why. And, and it's, yeah, gosh. And those are the people who are voting. <laughs> yes. yeah. That's what I think everyone forgets. They're like, well, if not, it's 49% of the country that, whatever. It, those are the people that are voting. The Trump voters are voting. 99% of people on social media who talk about this stuff don't vote. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. But man, I mean, I just love... Who... Was it Obama's... It was Obama's photographer that like pointed out... Yeah, that guy Pete Souza. Pete Souza. He pointed out that it was definitely a fake photo. <laughs> yeah. Because he actually photographed the real one yeah. when you had actually candid images of everyone while the raid was going on. On the bright side, looks like this ISIS guy is gone. Yeah. He's no longer on TikTok. He, di he Oh gosh. What I, happens to your TikTok account, account once you get murked? I think they take it down. Okay. I think they're like, you know what? And there's rumors that uh, the president of Turkey just gave him up because Trump needed to win. Yeah, that's I'm which okay is fine. That. It's good yeah. for the US. Fine terrorist on No sides. <laughs> no sides. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, whatever, man. I mean, it's so fucking chaotic. I don't know like what's good or bad. This I mean it seems good. <laughs> yeah, it seems good so, to me. Good stuff. It's good that ISIS people are really good. scary. Because this also seems, all the Syria stuff going on, and by pulling yeah. out of Syria, he just gave ISIS so much more control, and now all of a sudden this guy's dead. It's just like, I don't know, man. All right. It sounds good to us. Whatever. And you <laughs> get a photo up. Yeah, we got a good photo. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, what about, what's this thing about Trump with, uh, with Amazon? Trump told Mattis to screw over Amazon and give uh, a, d a big deal to... Microsoft? So Friday afternoon, there was big news that Microsoft was awarded a cloud computing services contract from the Pentagon that was worth $10 billion over the next 10 years. And everyone was like, okay, wow, good for Microsoft. No big deal. Yeah. Then reports immediately come out that the Secretary of Defense, uh, uh, James Mathis, had a biography that's coming out that said... Uh, Donald Trump personally got in, involved on this contract and said to screw Amazon, don't give him this contract. And so Amazon, so Microsoft got the benefit of it. <laughs> and that was just because he's yeah, Trump. Yeah, Trump's and, just like whatever. And it's like, if you think about Amazon's revenue, $10 billion over 10 years, not a big deal. But it's funny. It is funny. And I didn't know, I didn't realize that Amazon had a CIA contract. I only learned that from the Snowden Rogan interview. Yeah. Just Which seems is weird. Maybe it's not, but it seems weird. Wait, well, seems, part of it's weird to you. It just seems weird that Amazon, this massive company that gets these huge things like tax breaks and you know, is able to sort of bully their way through also, laws and stuff, also has a massive cloud business with the CIA. It well, just I think, seems... Well, I think this is the point. I think all these companies no one's touching them via regulation yeah. because now they've positioned themselves. It's, the it's a security threat if you break up Amazon, if you break up Facebook. Oh, China's just going to win. Yeah. And that's the mantra now. And they're going to win with that. So if you think face, anything's happening to Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google, it's not. Yeah. Not via government. They've scared the shit out of everyone. Only Jewel. Jewel? Jules fucked. Jules taking the wrath of all of this. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's easy. They're I small. I don't even know. Trump's rolling back. He rolled back a menthol ban <laughs> proposal. I have a feeling Jules is going to skate right through. I here. feel like we had a pro-cigarette mantra in the office Big this time. week. Yeah, we decided that um, anti jewel pro-cigarette. Yeah. And um, I'd love to see the whole company go, go downstairs and light up. <laughs> we might do that. 
Yeah. We might do that like for a, a Friday. Like, a, like, the, like the team pick. Yeah, we'll get in a circle. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pete's down. Pete's a big uh, nicotine yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, huge, huge into nicotine, yeah. cigs, all of it. Dip. Yep. So it turns out. <laughs> we, I, was, uh, yeah. I was raised on it. It just seems, One, two, three, everyone yell, cancer! <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you would, once again, I'm talking, I guess, in some weird, perfect world, but like you would like the CIA to have their own talent that can make them their own. But that's not even possible. I know, I get it. But like, what's China do? They, they just rely own everything? On TikTok. <laughs> like, let's figure out what the Americans are doing. Let's spy on drama's dance moves, see if we can pick up some secrets. You're damn right there's some <laughs> secrets in there. <laughs> How the hell this white guy dances so well? <laughs> um, okay, well, whatever, man. I don't know. It just seems fucking weird, but it's not the fight I want to fight. I'm saving my energy for this revolt that's never coming. The revolt's you, coming, and I think big tech is going to win bigger than ever. Have you seen Watchmen? Yeah, so what's going to happen? Those are two opposing ideas. <laughs> yeah. So the revolt's coming, and big tech's going to win it. <laughs> and say, fuck you guys. We'll build you a little dough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have we seen what? Watchmen on HBO. No, is that good? I watched one episode. They, uh, I think t- today's the second episode. I watched, I think, the first episode. I it's just good. saw it's, it next to Silicon Valley. It's very I'm, similar to the revolt conversation everything is the revolt yes <laughs> the revolt it's coming. coming i think what they're doing though is keeping the revolters entertained by revolt content so they don't actually revolt <laughs> if you have enough revolt they're content. like nah you know what i'm gonna watch laundromat i can't come out and revolt today i got an ad for the revolt conference that puff daddy does <laughs> yeah there you go there you go is it, is it in miami in miami or atlanta whatever but it's a there's a conference about revolting you guys want to send me <laughs> you should send me a, a report back is Pete gonna kill us i'd rather save the money for uh Women's prison. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we also, uh, Power is back. Yes. At least I on the that. app. I saw it. Not on Comcast. Yeah. Okay. Um, for the newsletter, I think uh, we're going more Kanye, right, Taylor? I think we should just load up on, on Kanye while we yeah, got Kanye it. Yeah, Kanye with a little bit of Trump. Nice. I Good like combo. You guys actually covered while my voice is gone. You talked about the cigarettes earlier. <laughs> Six are back. Right, are Six back. are back. Bring back cigarettes. Woo! Okay. Um, and then also make sure you hit us up. Um, go to gr- or send an email to groupchatquestions at gmail.com. Uh, make a video on your phone is what we're requesting of any question that you might have for us and send it to groupchatquestions at gmail.com. We're going to release. We got a bunch of good questions last week. We're going to release a couple of videos on our Instagram page uh, this week of us answering some good questions. So keep those coming because we really want to mix up the type of video content we're putting on our Instagram. And that's a new idea we have because we that's, get a lot of questions. Yeah, it's really good. We have, um, when are our first answers being posted? Tomorrow. Nice. We'll drop our first one tomorrow. And then Fuck a, you! If somehow... Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a little sneak peek. Okay. Yeah. That's a sneak peek. <laughs> if somehow you're not... Uh, subscribe to our newsletter. Go to group-chat.com uh, and follow us on Instagram, Group Chat Pod. Guys, I think we did it. Yes. That was a good Monday. Uh, Happy New Year's. Happy Diwali. Happy Diwali. Thank you, Pete. Asshole. Yeah, I just want to be Cultural. respectable. Pete's Pete's on it. Yeah, Pete's making all the right moves around here. Yeah. 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 He doesn't want to get revolted by the Indians when the Indians revolt. <laughs> I can't tell if he's going to kill us or he's going to join us. I think he's trying hard to join us. <laughs> yeah. He's he doesn't want to be out there revolting. It's rough out there <laughs> yeah, for revolting. Yeah, come on. Who wants to revolt? It's so hot. It's 90 degrees in October. <laughs> yeah. You want to revolt? And I, there's not enough sunscreen to protect me that <laughs> yeah. long, so we're just going to. Okay. All right. Well, guys, have a great week. <laughs>